Welcome to the biology class, the living world. From this chapter, there will be one question in NEET exam. Today's class is about what is living. What is living actually? Well, we know that this wonderful living world is occupied by living organisms. Now, what are living organisms? These are the organisms that can grow, move, reproduce and carry out various cellular activities like cell division, protein synthesis, differentiation, transmission of nerve impulses, etc. Again, they have structures known as cells. Next, where do they live? I mean habitat. They are present everywhere. Even in the cold mountains, deciduous forests, oceans, freshwater lakes, deserts and hot springs. Next, examples. Examples of living organisms are plants, animals and human beings. Science which deals with the study of living organisms is called biology. These living organisms don't live alone, we know. Instead, they live in groups. Wide variety of organisms live on earth and this is called diversity. So, what is meant by diversity? Diversity refers to the variety of life living together on earth. Next, how many organisms are there in this world? About 1.7 to 1.8 million species are known and described in this world. They include all the species, microorganisms, plants, insects, birds, animals, etc. Some organisms are so small that they cannot be seen with our naked eyes and some are very huge in size. Again, there are so many organisms yet to be identified. That means unknown organisms are there. Anyhow, different types of organisms are there in this world. All these different types of organisms which live on earth together form biodiversity. Next, naming. Each organism is given different names in different area. So, in a particular area, a particular name is given to a particular species. These names given to species in a particular area are called local names or common names or vernacular names. Though these common names are easy to follow, some drawbacks are there. What are the drawbacks? Point number one. Common names are inadequate. Only those organisms which are closely related with human life have been given these names. Others remain unknown. So, they don't have any name at all. Point number two. The same animal or plant is known by different names in different countries or places. Example, Albicia amara. It belongs to the family Fabaceae. It is called as Usilai in South Tamil Nadu and Turinji in North Tamil Nadu. It is also called as Unjai, Karuvahai, Arap tree, etc. in different places. Now you can see Albicia amara in this figure. So this plant that is Albicia amara is having different names in different area. Many names to one species. Third point is in some cases a simple common name refers to more than one animal or plant. One name to many species. For example, ironwood. It is a common name given to three different trees. That is, Corpinus carolineana, 
Austria, Virginiana and Parousia persica. All these three different plants are commonly called as ironwood. Another example is there that is robin bird. In Europe this name robin bird is given to Erythacus rubacula. Look at this figure it is Erythacus rubacula. The common name of this bird is robin in Europe. This is European robin bird. In United States also the same common name robin bird is given to another bird that is Turdus migratorius. Now look at this figure. It is American robin bird Turdus migratorius. It is American robin. So here the same common name has been given to two different birds in two different areas. One name to many species. Next point is, that is fourth point is, no definite system was being followed to select such common names. So, there was no fixed norms for the selection of common names. Fifth point is, the common names are sometimes misleading. Example, dogfish, starfish, jellyfish, crayfish etc. Look at these figures. First one is dogfish. This is Pacific spiny dogfish. It is a type of shark. It's a fish and it doesn't look like a dog. Second figure is starfish. It's not a fish but it's an echinoderm. That means it belongs to the phylum Echinodermata. Next figure is jellyfish. Jellyfish also is not a fish. Instead, they are invertebrates, which means they lack a backbone. Whereas fish are vertebrates and they have a backbone. This figure is jellyfish. These are invertebrates and they don't have a vertebral column or backbone. Next figure is crayfish. Crayfish is also a not fish. They are also invertebrates. So they also don't have any backbones. Again crayfish are crustaceans which are very much related to lobsters. Thus in all these cases, that is in dogfish, starfish, jellyfish and crayfish, common names are misleading. So, these are the five drawbacks in using common names for various organisms. To overcome these drawbacks of common names, there is a need to standardize the names of all living organisms. Based on this, Today, universally accepted, unique scientific name has been provided to every single organism. So, every single organism is known by the same name all over the world and this process is called as nomenclature. Now, let us discuss about nomenclature. So, what is nomenclature? A system through which organisms including plants, animals and microorganisms are given distinct scientific names is called nomenclature. Next, types of nomenclature. Three different types are there in nomenclature. They are polynomial nomenclature, trinomial nomenclature and binomial nomenclature. First, let us take polynomial system of nomenclature. According to this system of nomenclature, name of each plant or organism consists of many words. Poly means many. For example, look at the name of caryophyllum plant. Caryophyllum saxatilis, folis gramineus, umbellatis corymbis. 
This is the name of caryophyllum plant. It means caryophyllum plant is growing on rocks. They have grass-like leaves and umbellate corymph arrangement of flowers. In this, Saxatilis is a Latin word that means dwelling or found among rocks. Next, Folis gramineus means they have grass-like leaves and Umbellatus corymbus means they have umbellate corymb arrangement of flowers. So, the name of the plant is Caryophyllum saxatilis Folis gramineus Umbellatus corymbus. Let us take another example. Ranunculus plant. Ranunculus calicibus retroflexus, pedunculus falcatus, col erecto, folius compositus. This is the name of ranunculus plant. It means ranunculus plant or buttercup plant is with reflexed sepals, curved flower stalks, erect stem and compound leaves. In this, calicibus retroflexus means sepals are reflexed, that is, sepals are bent abruptly backward. Look at the picture of buttercup plant. Green colored sepals are reflexed, that is, bent backward abruptly. This is Ranunculus bulbosus plant with reflexed sepals. Next, Pedunculus falcatus means flower stalk is curved. Next, call erecto means stem is erect. And folius compositus means leaves or compound leaves. So the full name of the plant is Ranunculus calicibus retroflexus pedunculus falcatus call erecto folius compositus. Definitely, it is very difficult to follow this type of naming. So, polynomial nomenclature was discarded based mainly on three reasons. Now, we can see the reasons one by one. First reason is, it is lengthy and hence difficult to remember. Second reason is, the characters chosen for description varied from one taxonomist to another taxonomist. For example, arrangement of petals may be an important character to one taxonomist, but it may not be an important character to the other taxonomist. Instead, some other character may be an important one for him. So, there is the possibility of a great confusion. Third reason is they were cumbersome, very complicated and difficult to manage. These are the three reasons. So, polynomial nomenclature was completely discarded. Second type of nomenclature is trinomial system of nomenclature. This system was proposed by Huxley and Strickland. According to this system, name of any plant or species is composed of three words. Tri means three. First is the generic name, second specific name and third subspecific name or name of variety. When the members of any species have large variations, then this trinomial system can be used. Usually, on the basis of dissimilarities, each species is classified into subspecies or varieties. For example, Brassica oleracea has three varieties. That is, Brassica oleracea variety botrytis, that is cauliflower. Brassica oleracea variety capitata that is cabbage and Brassica oleracea variety colorapa that is nulcur. Figures are given here. First one Brassica oleracea variety botrytis that is cauliflower. Second one Brassica oleracea variety capitata and it is cabbage. And third one, Brassica oleracea variety cholerapa, that is nulco. 
All these three plants differ in their edible part. In cauliflower, head or capitulum inflorescence is the edible part. In cabbage, it is vegetative buds and in null coal, it is swollen stem or knob. From this, we can understand that in trinomial nomenclature, only the subspecies or variety name differs. Both generic and specific names remain the same. So, in species having many subspecies or varieties, this trinomial naming can be followed. Now, we shall pass on to the next type. So, third type of nomenclature is binomial system of nomenclature or binomial nomenclature. What is meant by it? Binomial nomenclature is a system used to name and identify organisms by two words. By means two. First word denotes the genus and the second word denotes the species. Binomial system of nomenclature is also known as binary nomenclature. So, there are three different types of nomenclature. They are polynomial, trinomial and binomial nomenclatures. Among these three types, binomial nomenclature is the most accepted system of scientific nomenclature. Why? Because binomial nomenclature has its own advantages. What are they? Number one, it is simple and precise. Second one, it is easy to remember. Only two words. First one is the generic name and second one is the specific name. Third advantage is this naming system using a two word format is convenient to use. Number four, it provides basic information about the species. Fifth one is interspecific relationship between different species of the same genus can be understood. These are the five advantages of binomial system of nomenclature. Now, let us study more about binomial system of nomenclature. Gaspard Bohin was the first who introduced binomial system in his book Pinax Theatre Botanici. It is a Latin language and its meaning is Illustrated Exposition of Plants. It was published in the year 1623. In that book, he explained about 6,000 plant species. But he himself did not follow the binomial system accurately in that book. Later, Carolus Linnaeus only used this binomial nomenclature system extensively for the first time. He proposed scientific names of all the plants and animals. So, Carolus Linnaeus is considered as the founder of binomial system of nomenclature. Linnaeus proposed scientific names of 5,900 plants in his book Species Plantarum in 1753. He also proposed scientific names of 4,326 animals in his book Systema Naturae in 1758. As we know, in binomial nomenclature, each scientific name has two components. First one is generic name. It denotes genus. Second name is specific name or specific epithet. It denotes species. For example, in the scientific name Solanum tuberosum, Solanum is the generic name and tuberosum is the specific epithet. Solanum tuberosum is the scientific name of potato and it is shown in this figure. It is Solanum tuberosum. Likewise, in the scientific name Manchfera indica, 
Mantifera is the generic name and Indica is the specific epithet. Mangifera indica is the scientific name of mango and it is shown in this figure. It is Mangifera indica. So, in binomial nomenclature, each and every organism is given a specific binomial name. Now, we shall pass on to learn how these binomial names are allotted to various species. In order to govern all these scientific or biological names, there are certain rules. This set of rules which have been framed to monitor the biological names is called as Code of Nomenclature. Now, let us study Code of Nomenclature. So, Code of Nomenclature is a set of rules that govern biological nomenclature or biological names. These rules define how to name living organisms that is plants and animals. First, let us study a brief history of code of nomenclature. In order to standardize the nomenclature and form definite norms, International Botanical Congress or IBC is established. Now, what is International Botanical Congress? International Botanical Congress or IBC is an international meeting of botanists in all scientific fields that is taxonomist, ecolo ecologist, anatomist, embryologist, etc. It is held every six years with a location rotating between different continents. Its principal purpose is to establish laws or rules of botanical nomenclature regarding the standardization of naming of plants. First International Botanical Congress was held at Paris in 1867. However, this 1867 Paris Congress is not accepted as the first IBC. Likewise, 1867 code is also not accepted as first international rules or code because it was not at all international in true sense. That means the meeting was not a standard one. Again, it was not strictly enforced like the current codes by the code experts. Later, in 1900, IBC or International Botanical Congress was held at the same place that is Paris. This 1900 Paris Congress is actually the first IBC that is International Botanical Congress. But no rules were published regarding botanical nomenclature in this meeting. Next IBC was held at Vienna in 1905 and it is the second IBC. After this 1905 Vienna Congress, that is second IBC, the first international rules of botanical nomenclature was published in 1906 that is after one year keep in mind it is international rules of botanical nomenclature and not code of nomenclature they just named it as rules so in second ibc the concepts discussed during the meeting was published after one year that is in 1906 then after the 7th IBC held at Stockholm, Sweden, in the year 1950, the first International Code of Botanical Nomenclature was published in the year 1952. So, it is very important. In 7th IBC held at Stockholm, that is Sweden, in the year 1950, the first international code of botanical nomenclature 
was formed. Since then, such congresses are held periodically to review and standardize the botanical code for nomenclature. Likewise, since 7th International Botanical Congress held at Stockholm in the year 1950, successive editions of the code have been published as ICBN, that is International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. During 12th International Congress held at Leningrad in the year 1975, ICBN, that is International Code of Botanical Nomenclature, was revised. This revised form was republished in 1978. Today, we follow these rules only. However, during 18th IBC, which was held in Melbourne, Australia, in the year 2011, the title ICBN has been changed to ICN, that is International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi and Plants. The abbreviation shall be either ICN or ICNAFP. Here ICNAFP denotes ICN for that is International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi and Plants. In this A, F and P should be small alphabetic letters. Then 19th IBC, the last one was held at Shenzhen, China in 2017. The printed version of Shenzhen code in its final form was published on 26 June 2018 and the electronic version of the same was made available on 27 June 2018, that is the next day. The 2023 IBC in Brazil was cancelled due to the pandemic. It will be held in Madrid in July 2024. So, 20th IBC will be held in Madrid, which is the capital city of Spain, in next July, that is 2024. That's all about the history of Code of Nomenclature. Now, let us study about ICBN, that is International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. What is this ICBN? What is its main purpose? ICBN is the set of rules and recommendations dealing with the botanical names that are given to plants. As we have studied during 12th International Congress which was held at Leningrad in 1975, ICBN was revised. The revised form was published in 1978. The binomial system which we follow today obeys the rules of ICBN only. So, if you find out a new plant, you should follow the rules of this ICBN in giving a new name to that plant. Now, let us study the main rules of ICBN. Rule number 1. According to binomial system, name of any species consists of two names. First one is the generic name. It denotes the name of genus. Second one is the specific name or specific epithet. It denotes the name of species. Example, Solanum tuberosum, which is the scientific name of potato. In this, Solanum is the generic name and tuberosum is the specific name. Likewise, in Mangifera indica, which is the scientific name of mango, Mangifera is the generic name and indica is the specific epithet. Second rule is, in botanical, in 
plant nomenclature that is ICBM tautonyms are not valid what are tautonyms alike or identical generic and specific names are called tautonyms so generic name and specific name should not be the same in plants for example like mangifera mangifera or solanum solanum etc this type of tautonyms are not valid or not allowed in botany but tautonyms are valid for animal nomenclature that is iczn that is international code of zoological nomenclature for example naja naja it is the scientific name of indian cobra another example ratus ratus it is the scientific name of rat next rule is the generic name is always written first which is like a noun having its first letter in capital form the generic name is always unique for a living organism the specific name is written after the generic name which is like an adjective having its first letter in small form again specific name can be single or compound for example in solanum tuberosum solanum is the generic name and its first letter is in capital form whereas tuberosum is the specific name and its first letter is in small form again in this example the specific name tuberosum is single that is one word whereas in hibiscus rosa sinensis rosa sinensis is a compound specific name here a hyphen mark is used to join two words that is a hyphen mark is there in between rosa and sinensis so rosa sinensis is a compound specific name fourth rule is length of generic name or specific name should not be less than 3 letters and not more than 12 letters example mangifera indica generic name is mangifera and it has 9 letters specific name is indica and it has 6 letters but there is an exception it is rixia padancotensis more than 12 letters here 14 letters are there in specific name padancotensis according to icbm this name that is the name which has more than 12 letters is not valid but this name was proposed before 1961 that is before icbn rules were framed and hence this name has been accepted and this name is valid next rule that is fifth one first letter of generic name should be in capital letter and first letter of specific name should be in small letter example mangifera indica in this m is capital letter and i is small letter but if the specific name is based on the name of some person or scientist its first letter should be in capital letter example i saw its panty here the specific name is based on the indian botanist p n pont this species was described in 1970 by two taxonomists hit kisho goswami and b s arya and the name that is i saw its panty was chosen to honor the contributions of the scientist p n pond to indian botany hence in this plant i saw its panty the first letter of the specific name should be in capital form as shown in the figure i saw its panty is a pteridophyte plant next rule is 
when the scientific names are handwritten or typed then generic name and specific name should be separately underlined but during printing both names should be italicized example mangifera indica since the scientific name mangifera indica is printed here it is italicized seventh rule is name of the scientist that is one who named and described the species should be written in short form or abbreviated form after the specific name so short form of scientist should be mentioned after the specific name it is called as author citation example mangifera indica lin dot here lin dot represents carolus linnaeus who first named and described the plant mangifera indica when two or more authors are associated with a valid publication of name their name should be linked with the help of latin word yet or the symbol and example delphinium viscosum who yet thomson so here this plant delphinium viscosum was first described by two scientists that is robert hook and thomson in this table the standard form of some authors abbreviations has been given first one linnaeus l dot or lin dot bentham bent dot william hooker hook dot robert brown r dot b r dot lamar l a m k dot a p d control d c dot balik wall dot alphonse d control a dot d c dot next rule name of scientist should not either be underlined or be italicized but should be written in roman letters that is simple alphabets ninth rule is if any scientist has proposed wrong name then his name should be written in bracket and the scientist who corrected the name should be written after the bracket example suga canadensis bracket open lin dot close bracket caria in this linnaeus named this plant as pinus canadensis so later carrier has corrected the name as suga canadensis these two plants are entirely different that is pinus and suga suga and pinus can be differentiated by the following characteristics as you see in the figure in suga plant the leaves are simple short petiolate and they are spirally arranged around the stem leaves are linear look at the next figure each leaf or needle is borne on a small raised rounded peg underline underside of the needle has two parallel pale glaucous bands that is covered with waxy coatings this is suga canadensis now what about the leaves of pinus tree as it is shown in the figure in pinus the leaves are long narrow and tough they are generally called as pine needles these pine needles are bundled together usually in clusters of 2 3 or 5 you can see the bundles of pine needles in this figure as we have seen suga is entirely different from pinus and hence has been renamed as suga canadensis 10th rule is scientific names are generally derived from latin or latinized regardless of their origin next rule is type specimen or that is herbarium sheet of newly discovered plant should be placed in herbarium that is dry garden or collection of dried and preserved plant specimens 
you can see a picture here this picture is central national herbarium calcutta you can see many racks containing herbarium sheets for reference herbarium sheet individual herbarium sheet the standard size of herbarium sheet is 11.5 inch into 16.5 inch or 29 centimeter into 41 centimeter we have to remember one thing nomenclature is invalid in the absence of herbarium sheet so in this herbarium sheet two twigs of ixora coccinea have been mounted so these are the main rules of icbn other than icbn or today's icn for algae fungi and plants there are certain other codes of nomenclature for other branches of biology what are they other codes of nomenclature or of course icsn that is international code of zoological nomenclature then icnp international code of nomenclature of prokaryotes which in 2008 replaced the international code of nomenclature of bacteria icnb so nowadays we use icnp instead of icnb P stands for prokaryotes. Prokaryotes include both bacteria as well as archaea. Then ICBCN that is International Code of Virus Classification and Nomenclature. It talks about all viruses. And ICNCP International Code of Nomenclature for cultivated plants what are cultivated plants cultivated plants are nothing but the plants which are planted and grown for a definite purpose now we can discuss some neat questions in this portion first question select the correctly written scientific name of mango which was first described by carolus linnaeus it is the 2019 neat question first option mangifera indica second option mangifera indica car dot lin dot third option mangifera indica lin dot fourth option mangifera indica answer is option 3 so the correct answer is mangifera indica lin dot in the first option the first letter of specific name is capital letter it's wrong because the first letter of specific name should be small letter in the second option the author name is given as car dot lin dot again it is wrong because the name of author carolus linnaeus should be written either as l dot or lin dot in the fourth option author citation citation is missing second question which statement is not true for binomial system of nomenclature so here we have to find out the incorrect statement first option biological names are in latin or latinized or derived from latin irrespective of their origin second option the first word in a biological name represents the species while the second word denotes the genus third option the first word of biological name starts with the capital letter and the first letter of second word starts with small letter fourth option name of the author is written in abbreviated form after the specific epithet answer is option 2 the first word in a biological name represents the species while the second word denotes the genus because this statement is actually wrong and the correct form is the first word in a biological name represents the genus while the second word denotes the species 
Options 1, 3 and 4 are correct statements. Third question. ICBN stands for First option, Indian Congress of Biological Names. Second option, International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. Third option, International Congress of Biological Names. And fourth option, Indian Code of Botanical Nomenclature. Answer is option 2, International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. Fourth question. Linnaeus described 5,900 species of plants in his book Dash in the year 1753 and 4,326 species of animals in his book Dash in the year 1758. First option, Philosophia Botanica Genera Plantarum. Second option, Historia Naturalis Species Plantarum. Third option, Systema Naturae Species Plantarum. And fourth option, Species Plantarum Systema Naturae. We know that Book of Plants written by Linnaeus is Species Plantarum and his Book of Animals is Systema Naturae. So, answer is option four. That is Species Plantarum Systema Naturae. Philosophia Botanica is a book by Carolus Linnaeus that was first published in the year 1751 and it's a compilation or collection of his lectures on botany. Genera Plantarum It was again a publication by Carolus Linnaeus. The first edition was published in Leiden in 1737. Historia Naturalis, it is natural history, is a 37 book Encyclopedia of Natural Science written by Pliny the Elder. It's considered one of the latest single books to have survived from Roman Empire to the modern day. Fifth question, Assertion. Binomial nomenclature is a system of providing name with two words. Reason, each name consists first of a specific name and second of a generic name. First option, both assertion and reason are true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion. Second option, both Assertion and reason are true, but reason is not the correct explanation of assertion. Third option, assertion is true, but reason is false. Fourth option, both assertion and reason are false. Here, assertion is correct, reason is incorrect. We know that in each binomial name, first word is the generic name and second is the specific name. So, the correct answer is option C. Assertion is true, but reason is false. That's all. Meet you in next class. Thank you.